With me now from New York is Jahane Nujame and from Cairo, Sarah Ishak. Uh, Jahane, congratulations, first of all. Uh, tell us, what is it about the Arab Spring that was so inspiring to you as a filmmaker? Um, well, I'm Egyptian. I grew up about 10 minutes away from Tahrir, and the square really gave birth to this film, Tahrir Square. Um, in the square, I met an incredible uh, group of uh, filmmakers, Egyptian filmmakers. It was a great collaboration. And I met characters that inspired me, that were fighting for human rights and social justice, a universal struggle, um, and have spent the last three years and are still on the ground fighting. Um, and they're, they're incredibly inspiring people, people that will put everything that they have on the line to fight for what they believe in. And they're, they taught me a great deal about courage and bravery. And so this film I see and this uprising that we followed is really about the courage and beauty of the Egyptian people. Um, and it, uh, it, it's changed me forever, actually, the, the process of making it. Ah, well, I'll ask you about that in a minute. I just want to say congratulations to Sarah as well in, in Cairo. What inspired you with your film? Um, I was I was in Sana'a when the uh, when the revolution began, um, and I spent quite a bit of time in the square um, with with cameramen and with with people in the field hospital before it became violent. Um, what inspired me was uh, similar to Jahan was the was the bravery of the young men who put themselves at risk really on in the front lines, um, and uh, and went back the you know the following day even after witnessing you know the the, the brutality of the of the regime they witnessed death young men as well um, and I, I felt that. As, as a filmmaker and someone who had the means to maybe um, put their message across to the world, um, that I should, should in some way um, facilitate that for them and with them. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was, it was really uh, inspiring to be, to be in the midst of, of such bravery. Mm. Uh, Jahan, why don't you tell us why you say your life has been changed forever on making your film? Um, well, I've spent a great deal of time in Egypt and in the States, and you know, the U.S. is a place which is known for its people power, of, its up, of the uprising of the 60s, and um, yet I marched against the Iraq War and the Afghanistan War, and it was depressing to see nothing um, be affected by those marches. So I have to say, when I went down to the square in Egypt, I had made a film in 2007 um, about uh, women who were fighting for political change, and most protests ended with people being beaten and jailed and cameras smashed, and I was worried. Um, um, but when they managed to bring down a, a president of 30 years, a dictator of 30 years, um, my complete understanding of possibility changed. And I think when that happens to you and you see this determined nature of people and this um, adamant nature, this, this you have to, the people sticking to their principles against all odds, your sort of understanding of yourself changes. It's not only a revolution on the outside, it's a revolution on the inside. And when you experience that, that magic, the, the, the hope is to be able to share that with the rest of the world. And that's why we, we made a film. Mm. Uh, Sarah, Jahan mentioned the possibilities that emerge from the Arab Spring, very much seen as an opportunity for women to have a voice when women were often marginalized. But I wonder if you think things have changed permanently when it comes to women's rights? Um, women did take um, a very significant stance during the revolution and they have been recognized um, since then as well in, in, in some very prominent roles, um, whether you know, with, in relation to you know, Nobel Peace Prize, uh, journalists um, and, and within media. Um, I think what it has done is it has set uh, a precedent, and it's and 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 women have set an example. Um, politically, I don't I don't really think that that much has changed. There hasn't really been progress um, in 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 that regard. Um, but on a social level, I think doors have been opened. Women are are, are definitely uh, more inspired, um, and and I, f I think they feel that, that that they they are able to 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 break free from from the shackles of society and and uh, and, uh, and and politics as well, and 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 really uh, take part in a more effective manner. Uh, so in that respect, I think things have changed. Uh, Jahan, there are a number of people in the West who look at Egypt and say, think actually. Not that much has changed. What would you say to them? 
Well, first of all, I would say that um, it took 16 years between the revolution and the constitution writing in the United States. So, you know, we've had three. Um, these, uh, these processes take a long time. Um, and there are people that are still on the ground every single day fighting for change. Um, one incredible woman, Raji Omran, who got me out of prison a couple of times and is in the courthouses getting people out of prison every day, is on the forefront of that change, and many others. Um, and the, the, the change doesn't only happen on the political level. It's also happening on other levels, on the cultural level, the explosion of art and poetry, okay. writing on walls. Um, all of this is changing the culture. Um, and, and, and that's very significant. And if you think about the civil rights movement, for example, there was a consciousness change. People would never put up with the kinds of actions that happened after the civil rights movement as they did before the civil rights movement. And I believe a consciousness has changed and is changing in Egypt as we speak. Thank you both very much, and we wish you all the best. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.